Welcome to Community College Softball here on SportsNetUSA.net and Chargers Live. That's right, it's a beautiful April afternoon and we're here at the home of five-time state championships, your Cypress Chargers taking on the Pirates from Orange Coast College here on SportsNetUSA.net, Chargers Live, Ed, John, Albert, and the old guy bringing you another exciting community college game and we'll see against a powerhouse Cypress Charger baseball team that loves to hit the ball out of this ballpark, Albert. You look at them, 43 home runs as a team this season. Ball should fly, we'll see what happens today in this game. Orange Coast needs this game. Cypress is at that point right now when you look at the conference, they're probably gonna take the top four and that'll be it. They're gonna have to find something in a fun season playing baseball. Absolutely, you know, Pirates come in today, 13 and 19 overall record, seven and six in the OEC compared to your Chargers who are 18, 13 and one, four and nine in the OEC. So both teams absolutely need this win here today. And for the Pirates, knowing how Cypress has played, might be a tough one offensively considering the amount of home runs they've hit and of course how often they slug the ball. Drake is on the mound for your Cypress team and leading things off today is going to be the left fielder for them, Owen Wessel. So Wessel will end up leading things off for Orange Coast. Skies it right behind second base, an easy little put out for Darren Chapman, the shortstop for your Cypress Chargers. Lining up defensively for your Chargers besides Hunter Drake being on the mound behind the plate today is gonna be Trent Johnson over at first, the old standard Ryan Shonsby. Out in second, we got Nathan Jackal at short. Darren Chapman, of course, he just made the first put out of the game. At third, Albert De La Rosa. In left, Evan Robecki. Center, Robert Pitts Jr. And in right field, Jack Burke. Sebastian Moore, the center fielder for OCC. Coming up to the plate. Moore batting 297 this season for the Pirates. Arr. High and away. To Moore. 14 RBIs this season. Strikes out a lot, it's got 18 strikeouts already. Little waggle on the bat. That one at the knees. Not called. Three and one's the count. Fans absolutely wanted that call, but if they could see what we could see, then they would know he was just a little bit off. Three and one. Just starting the game off. Top of the first. Fouled away. Three and two. Sebastian out of Dana Hills. Six foot one sophomore. Fouls that one away also. Have some interested coaches watching this game from Point Loma, UCI. Jessup, which is in Northern California. Two NAIA schools. One NCAA school. A little variety out here. So Moore works his way on with a walk. It's going to bring up the catcher for Orange Coast College. JT Crabb. Come on, 
JT batting 340 for OCC. Runner over at first, one out. Takes that for a ball. Albert, last time you and I were out here, the walks were the nemesis for the pitching staff for Cypress. Absolutely, Pavlovsky really was off to a good start until that disaster of a fourth inning where he allowed four walks, got substituted out, and then another hit, by, uh, another hit batsman was a disaster of an inning. And realistically, even though I think only one or two runs scored that inning, it could have been a heck of a lot but it still was really the beginning of the end for the Chargers in that particular game. It was. Off the plate. Three and oh is the count. So we see the inconsistency of consistency, which is inconsistent. Drive to left field, to the wall. It's gonna go down. So we get a stand up double. Well, Becky made a great effort to try and make a nice diving play, but it just passed his outreached glove. Rolled right past it as the ball went right into the fence. Quick recovery to get the ball back in and prevent the runners advancing any further than beyond third base, but we got runners in scoring position with only one out and the Pirates quickly in position to do some damage here in the first. That's going to be up, bring up Zach Late, the first base person for OCC today. Zach batting 330. Fouls it away. Zach with 32 RBIs this season, leads the team. Next close and ch closest challenger is Wessel with 27. Which is impressive for a leadoff hitter. Zach's got 22 walks. Leads the team with walks. Also an on-base percentage of 465 as well. So clearly late is pretty on time at the plate because he's got some great discipline. And eight home runs. Throw over to third. Runner gets back. So more walks. Crab gets a double. That brings up late with a possibility to drive in a couple runs to start this game off for Orange Coast College. Off the plate, two and one. Orange Coast located in Costa Mesa, California. Not far from Vanguard University. Three and one the count. Well, Albert, if it's going to go this way, you're going to have to play great defense right now if you're Cypress College because you're going to be facing runners in scoring position. Yeah, Drake's going to need a really good pitch to get back in this particular count. Excuse me. Over towards third base. Fair ball. Quick throw. Runner is safe. So a really tough play for De La Rosa. It was a, excuse me, check swing that sort of made it to third base. A little slow, like, dribble, dribbler right down third baseline. De La Rosa got in front of it, but didn't have enough hop for him to, like, really play it up. Had to kind of go down, take a quick step back. Made a good throw, but offline, take Shonsby off the bag. The real benefit, though, kept the runner at third. So it brings up Williams playing right field with bases loaded here in the top of the first. Takes a strike. Kobe Williams, betting 295. 
22 RBIs, 12 walks, 41 strikeouts. As he swings through that one. If there's ever an out that you have a good chance of getting to really get out of this inning, here's your guy. And that's not to say he can't swing. I mean, he's hitting 295, which isn't nothing, but clearly he likes to take the bat off his shoulders. Strike three. Three pitches, out number two. So that's going to bring up Luke Flynn. He's playing third base for OCC today. Luke batting 296. So Hunter Drake trying to get out of what would be a big traffic jam right now if it just showed up. He got that quick out on a first pitch swing from Owen West who popped out to Darren Chapman and then promptly loads the bases right afterwards but does get right back in it by getting a nice called strike three. Little lazy pop fly right there at second base. And Nathan Jackal says, I'll just stop it here. Well, it looked like Orange Coast was going to jump all over your Cypress Chargers. No runs on two hits, no errors, and three left on base. They wiggled their way out of it. No runs for OCC. So as we head to the bottom of the first, we'll see if your Cypress Chargers can counter with something. It's OCC zero. Cyprus coming to bat here on Chargers Live and Sportsnet USA.net. Burke, Robecki, Sconsby to lead things off for your Chargers. Of course, you look at the defense for OCC. Yeah, Jack Ross on the mound for the Pirates. His battery mate behind the plate is going to be JT Crab. Over at first base, we got Zach Late. At second, Connor DeBannon. Over at short, Taylor Takata. At third, Luke Flynn. And your outfielder from left to right, we got Owen Wessel, Sebastian Moore, and in right field, Kobe Williams. Jack Burke having a nice season, batting 339, on base percentage 459, slugging percentage of 730. Jack's got 11 home runs this season. 30 RBIs, hit eight doubles, couple triples, 115 at bats. He's got 39 hits, most hits on the team by Evan Robecki. Evan sitting there at 50, leading hitter on the team. So Burke, Robecki, and Sconsby will start things off. For the opposing Jack on the mound. Nine games started for Jack Ross. Across 47 innings pitch allowed 50 hits, 22 runs, 14 of them earned. Has given up 14 walks, 31 strikeouts, and allowed five home runs. ERA of 264, which I would say is pretty darn nice for this Pirates team here today. Yeah, it's acceptable. 264 ERA. Unless it was softball, then that'd be high, Corey Nealon. But for, for this level where, where pitching is tough and hitters are abundant, especially in the highly competitive OEC, it's, it's hard to ask for anything better. So Jack Burke playing right field to lead things off for your Chargers. Swings at the first one, pulls it foul. Jack has struck out 33 times this year, walk 20. Jack gets a base hit to start things off. Thank you for that sweet hop, as Jack says, I'll take that base hit. Luke Flynn said if I was only six foot nine, I'd had a chance. And that was a big time chopper as opposed to a grounder, went right 
over the outstretched glove, trying to get some hops right over Luke Flynn. So Evan Robecki comes up, 391 this season, 26 ribbies, three home runs. Swings the bat. He's only walked eight times, struck out 10 times. On the outside for a strike. Excellent number two hitter for this Cypress team. Throw to first, not in time. Burke gets back. Burke, four stolen bases. Hasn't been caught yet this year. Go back over there again. Ross probably aware of that fact, hasn't been caught stealing and if you can't pick him off, Better off trying to keep him where he's at. Deep fly ball, to left field. Goodbye. Well, I told you, Jack, I told you Robecki was a great second hitter. He just said, you know, old guy, I'm just going to prove you right. Took it deep to left field, and when he hit it, there was no doubt about it. Your Chargers are up two to nothing. Absolutely right, Mark. And it's funny, as soon as Robecki made contact with that ball. I could hear some of the parents right, right behind me just say, oh, it's gone. Just plain as day, gone. And, and we, I even know it here, waiting wait for you to get your nice little home run call there because I know you desperately wanted to have that call. And that thing just carried barely any hook, didn't need the wind at all. Robecki just crushed it. So your Chargers are up again with their 44th home run of the season. Gonsby comes up, playing first base. Pops it up. Luke Flynn settles underneath it, almost lets it get away from himself. But Flynn hauls it in for the first out. So a couple hits, a couple runs to start off the bottom of the first for your Cypress Chargers. And of course, if you're a fan of the Chargers, the home run ball has not been an issue for this team. Two and oh. Did De La Rosa takes that for a strike? Albert's batting three seventy nine. Takes a strike. And when I say Albert, I don't mean the man batting next to me. De La Rosa is a better hitter than I ever was. Okay. I can tell you that right now. Reaches for it. Maybe some comparable speed, though. Ball's pretty quick. Where? What? You mean with the batter? You get comparable speed with the man at the plate? Not bat speed. Leg oh. speed. Oh, okay. All right. A little high. Five eighty six slugging percentage. Takes it up the middle. Go down on one knee, throw over to first. Pulls the runner and it's a shot. Right there, taken by Taylor Takata. He goes down and gets it, comes up, pulls the runner off. I'm gonna give him a base hit on that one. We'll see what the official scorekeepers do. So far, it looks like scorekeepers are going to They haven't done anything him. yet with it. 
Actually, I, uh, nope, yeah, oh, error that's is the an official error. call. So that's it. So that's going to be E6. Tough call. Deep fly ball into the alley. To the wall. Off the top yellow marker. Home run number two for Arenado here in this inning. So two long balls, home run number 45, and the Chargers are up four to nothing. Chargers are basically in a nice little rhythm. Get on base, hit a home run. They got one out, get on base, hit a home run. That brings up Robert Pitts Jr. Swung through the first pitch for a strike. Three hits in this inning, two of them home runs for Cypress. And here's the thing, sunlight, sunlight is what it was. JT Crabb, first of all, bumps into the umpire who doesn't get out of his way in time. Then he finds the ball for OCC, looks directly into the sun, tries to get it in Albert. He put his hand up, maybe should have gone with a basket catch on that one. Yeah, tough call. He was, he was quick to ditch the mask. You know, he did bump into the umpire there. He's able to track it down all the way, and the ball just ricocheted just off the glove. Couldn't quite get under it. My guess is the wind probably pulled it away from just a little bit last second. In addition to the sun complications there, tough play altogether. So Robert Pitts Jr. gets a reprieve. Takes it deep. Left field. Could it be three? I guess it could be. So three home runs in this inning. Well, I'll tell you what, that's 46. They're moving up to my age real quick here. That's really quite the sequence of events there, Mark. You know, Pitts thinks he fouled out earlier. Had his head down as he's, you know, running out to first base anyway. Next pitch, goodbye. So Burke gets a hit. Robecki hits a home run. De La Rosa gets on in an air. Arenado hits a home run. And Robert Pitts Jr. said, I don't need anybody in front of me. Fly ball easily taken there by Connor DeBanion, who pulls that in for out number two. Darren Chapman coming up, playing shortstop today for your, oh, and Darren Chapman takes one off the high shoulder or the back of the helmet. And he heads to first base. Boy, I tell you what. That was a nasty pitch, and that brings up Trent Johnson. I, Albert, I, I I thought he caught it in the back of the neck. Yeah, looking at the replay, it looks like he like had just barely ducked down. It was it would have come from his head, absolutely. But luckily, he was able to kind of duck out of the way just a little bit on time to reduce any potential further injury from that hit by pitch. Runner goes. Throw down to second, stolen base. So Chapman steals second.
And right now, if you're OCC, well, you feel like the wheels might have come off the cart right now. I see a crab coming out of his stance, indicate to Jack Ross there, hey, let's go ahead and uh, change, up our, change up our signals here. Ball down in the dirt. Crab makes a nice stop over there. Chapman on second, four runs in, three dingers. It's lotto time here at Cypress. Little never down the first baseline that goes foul. And looking at the scoreboard mark, it looks like they've done a little bit of a reversal. They've taken away that early error. error and granted a base hit. So five hits for the Chargers. That's so nice that somebody listens to me when I'm scoring a game. Right away. That's right, Mr. Nealon. On the one for De La Rosa, I called it a base hit originally. Official scorekeeper tried to be a commander on that one, then realized eh, maybe the old guy does know what he's talking about. Get over to first, right back. Nice little easy hop to Zach Late, but not before we get five big runs on the board. Five runs on five hits, no errors, and one left on base. As we head to the top of the second, it's Cypress 5, Orange Coast College 0, here on Sportsnet, USA.net, and Chargers Live. Albert, John, Ed, happy to be out here for a beautiful April afternoon and community college baseball on Chargers Live and Sportsnet, USA.net. Well, Albert, let's go back and one of the things we brought up, because we just saw it. The power has been there for Cyprus. The hitting has been there for Cyprus when you really think about it. Team ERA, 5.83, almost six. So that could be a thing. Fielding percentage, 944. Two things that you look at. When you look at Cyprus, team batting average, 332, opposition, 235. Home runs, now 46. You look at RBIs, 274 to 192 for opposition. Best ERA in the team, 3.79. So you can't say it's not a lack of offensive output that they are where they are today in the standings. You gotta look at those that are throwing from the mound and those who are playing defense behind them. Absolutely, and these Chargers clearly, you know, they get it done behind the plate, but it's everywhere else that they just are missing that little something. I mean, looking at their ERA, clearly they need a little bit a better pitching. I mean, we saw like with the last game with Pavlovsky who fell apart, you know, having trouble with location. And we've seen that from other relievers and other appearances too, just having trouble locating the ball. You know, velocity, and types of and quality of pitches, they seem to be okay. It's just can they locate them? And in the later stages of the game, where it gets a little more critical, they've been unable to show up. Keith Aguilar at the plate for Orange Coast. He's the designated hitter today. And it's fun when you talk about pitching because the discussions have been a mass on all levels recently. Next one off the plate. Had the, had the opportunity to talk to three of the representatives, at two from the NAIA, one for the NCAA. Come on, come on. Come on. Interesting conversation about pitching. Aguilar yes, swings through that one. Like they said, most, most kids today are now told, rear back and throw it as hard as you can. Hope you hit the strike zone. Down in the dirt. Two and two's account. And of course, Albert, you watching a lot of professional baseball. We're seeing a lot of professional players get hurt because of the way pitching's being taught nowadays. 
I had seen some weird theories that uh, seemed to indicate that with the recent crackdown on the sticky stuff was like a tr uh, attributing cause to a lot of recent injuries. I don't know how much I can buy into that. I was never a pitcher, but it's a, it's an interesting thought nonetheless. Well, sticky stuff helps them with spin rate. Jack Burke goes tracks that down to right field. So Jack, a smooth outfielder in right field, goes and gets the ball for out number one. That brings up the second base person, Connor DeBanion for OCC. So we've listened to a lot of velocity and spin rate. Uh, just misses DeBanion. And we've listened, I've listened to coaches today tell me that, yeah, that's a attitude that should be changed, teaching young people how to pitch. One and oh. Two and oh. I had one of the one of the coaches tell me, show me a guy that throws eighty two miles an hour, but he puts all his pitches on the edge or over the plate. He'll take that. High and away. Three and oh. Come on, Jake, finish down, baby. While while arm strength can be absolutely valuable valuable. Mechanics are everything. Mechanics are what keeps you healthy and what helps you generate additional power aside just from, you know, a natural arm cannon. So DeBanion gets a walk. Walk number two. Brings up shortstop Taylor Takata. Takata batting 297. Offer snap throw to first, not in time. So Takata showed bunt. Got his bat back in time. 17 walks, 14 strikeouts for the shortstop for Orange Coast. Off the plate, ball two. Should be noted that DeBannon only has one stolen base over at first, been caught stealing three other times. Takata, nice little pickup, throw to second, back to first, not in time. Nathan Jackal makes a sweet little play, turns on it, gets it to Darren Chapman. Chapman just can't get the runner. They do call the runner out at first base. So are we getting an interference call over at second base? That might be the case. So the runner was initially safe at first. They got the runner at second. Then they called the runner out. So we're going to say runner interference so you get a double play. Would have been interference on DeBannon's part, I yeah, believe? Yeah, going into second would be the interference. So is what we're going to get. So that's runner's interference. And that causes, they got him out at, DeBannon was out at second. That's a 4-6. And then the runner at first is out because of the interference for a double play. And yeah, my guess is there probably might have been that late slide. That's what I'm thinking. That, pro so, that probably interfered with Chapman's ability to efficiently make the actual play. So no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. As we head to the top of the second, it's Cypress 5. Orange Coast College 0 here on Sportsnet, USA.net, and Chargers Live. Tough call, too, on that, too, because... It's a late call on that because if you're sliding over the top of the bag, they'll still call it nowadays because they'll say that your intention was to take out or interfere with somebody making that initial throw 
to the bag. And that's what was called. So let's go back to the top of the order. On the corner for a strike. Burke had a base hit his first time up. Pulls out one foul. Jack was all over that pitch. Jack said, if I could just straighten it out a little. Off the end of the bat. We'll see how the timing is affected now. It was a little bit early on the first pitch, a little late on that one. High and away. You look at Jack, really, and people say, okay, well, as a leadoff hitter, eight doubles, two triples, and 11 home runs. Albert, that's the leadoff hitter for this Cypress team. Definitely a fun player to watch. 128 bats this season for Jack. He's got 50 hits. Foul tipped into the catcher's glove, so Jack strikes out. Out number one. Robecki, his first time up, said, well, you know what? I keep telling you guys, when I hit the ball, it goes a long way. And yeah, it did the first time up. Now with 28 ribbies this season. Hits that one, scorches it in the left field. So Evan is two for two today. And the sound of that bat, Mark, it was just, didn't have that clean, like, bing, off the Luna bat, but it had that sharp, like, dead wooden sound where it just, just that clean knock that you just love to hear. It just had a lot of squared up on that one. Yeah, Evan, when he gets hot, is hot. Evan's got four stolen bases this season. Hasn't been caught yet when he's gone. Gonsby up at the plate. The big first baseman takes that for a ball. Ryan batting 354 this season, 593 slugging percentage. Down and away. He's gone yard six times. Nine doubles. Six home runs, 39 RBIs. He leads the team with ribbies. Throw back over to first. Snap throw. Ball just sort of smothered by Zach Lake at first base. Big lefty, over swings it just a little. So every three times he gets up, he should get an RBI. At least one of those three for Sconsby. That's what his percentage is. 113 at bat, 39 ribbies. So I rounded it up just a little for him. Three and one. It's underneath that. High, sun, goes a little foul. Bounces high into the street next door. The Banyan at first. Takata at short. Flynn over at third. And of course, Zach Lake over at first base. That's the infield for the Pirates. 
Ball four. De La Rosa comes up. He had a base hit his first time up. Sero Becky. Now over at second. Down and away. All right, Albert, are you even throwing it close to the middle of the plate with these guys, the way they're hitting the ball? I'm definitely doing my best to attack them while also kind of pitch around them a little bit because at the same time, you don't really want a piece of the guy who's currently on deck. Throw to second base, not in time. Connor DeBanion trying to keep Robecki close. DeBanion sort of stalking him from his second base position. And there was a, a particular uh, pitching philosophy exhibited uh, by Lance Lynn when he was pitching against the Dodgers a couple days ago. I think he had the bases load, and his philosophy was, you know what, what? Let it rip. Like, they're already on base, nothing much I can do. Just going to fire it away. And he you know, ended up getting out of the inning pretty much unscathed that particular time. And if there is a, a time to execute that philosophy, now would be it for OCC. De La Rosa takes that foul by the home dugout. Owen Wessel in left, Sebastian Moore in center, and Kobe Williams in right. That's the outfield for OCC. De La Rosa says, Albert looks at it and says, you know what? Let me let this one fly. That's what my counterpart is saying on the air, so we'll see what he does with his swing here. One and two. Down in the dirt, two and two's the count. OCC in their orange and blue jerseys. Trying to dog the runners, they can't. Albert hits a shot, it's gonna drop fair. One runs in. They're gonna hold the runner on a stand up double by De La Rosa. So a couple more hits. Six for the game. Well, they got seven. Oh, that's right, they changed that one. So that would give them seven. Shot over to third. Sconsby heads home. He gets tagged over at third, double play. So we're going to get Five, five two, to two, two to five, five then to two, two to six. It will be the double play. So it's five to two to five to two to six for the double play. You don't see that every day, Mark. No, not really. But another run comes in. One run on two hits, no errors and nobody left on base. As we head to the top of three, it's now Cypress six, Orange Coast College zero, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Albert, the old guy, John and Ed, happy to bring you the games here on Sportsnet, USA.net, Chargers Live. More action around the corner, make sure you check the home page here in Charger Sports to see what's coming up. Don't forget, a few more games over at Cerritos. We'll see what's happening with Cody and her softball team on an exciting game against Mount Sac the other day where it looked like Mount Sac had 
taking the lead, just like Cyprus did the game before. And it looked like Mount Sac, who is one of the top teams in California, was going to say good night to Cody's team, especially after Corey Nalen said Serena should have won it in the seventh. But what did they do? Cody found a way to get her team to dig deep and beat Mount Sac and stay right in the middle. Four teams at least, maybe five coming out of that conference for softball in the playoffs. We'll see what happens here on sportsnetusa.net and Chargers Live. And you know, they say they should have won it in the seventh. I, I agree in that it should have been done in the top of the seventh because I am still of the opinion that Mount Sac did not score that run before the out was recorded at first base on that fielder's choice. Yeah, Albert, there was a run down between first and second. The runner from third broke. They tried to occupy, uh, occupy the people at first and second before you were tagged. Albert was watching and said she never scored before the out was made. He said she scored after the out was made. Therefore, that run does not count. Of course, that is only my opinion, but I believe my opinion to be correct in this particular instance. Wessel popped up to short his first time up. Aaron Chapman said, yeah, I'll take another one of those. It was pretty easy. De La Rosa at third, Chapman at short. Nathan Jackal over at second. Trent Johnson behind the plate. Jack Burke in right, Robert Pitts Jr. in center, and Evan Robecki in left field. That's the defense for your Cypress Chargers. Easy, let's see who's gonna pull this one down. Floating back there, Darren Chapman said, well, you know what, I did it the first time he was up. I might as well continue the streak with this time. And easily takes that out as Chapman just cruised back to get that pop up. Darrell Becky came in charging as if it was gonna be his ball, but that pop up never really left the infield. Chapman saw that one all the way. Brings up Moore who walked his first time up. So Moore comes up, playing center field for OCC. Sebastian, the sophomore outfielder, batting 236. Out of Edison High School. Excellent high school baseball program. Fouls that off. Or a little jumpy there. That ball nowhere near the actual bottom of the strikes and well below it, almost in the dirt. Drake also from Edison. So these are former teammates playing against each other. High and away. Hunter Drake, a freshman. So they probably played with each other when they were both at Edison. Probably a little bit of crossover. Off the play. Definitely knows them well enough. It's like, I'm not gonna let you get a piece of me. Go have first base. That's it. Moore's got seven RBIs this season. And Moore said, well, thank you. I'll take that. Took a walk the last time he was up. Gets a walk again this time up. That's going to bring up JT Crabb, who had a double his first time up. JT batting 340, 455 slugging percentage, which went up after that double. 
JT was trying to get a couple runs on the board with that swing. Absolutely, didn't anticipate the off speed though. A one count. So the runner will advance on a pass ball by Trent Johnson because he should have caught in that. Albert's going to disagree. Albert, the glove was it, it, there. It, it, it was his, more in the dirt. But he had his hand in the wrong position. He didn't move his body over. It was a ball that was easily knocked down. He didn't do that, so I'm going to call it a pass ball. Albert's just a, a generous person. I'm an old curmudgeon. <laughs> Back deep to the wall. Pitts goes up. Goodbye. Grab says, you know what? Let's get this thing out of here and get going. And that was hit, Albert. That was close to the 386 mark out in the alley. Yeah, about 10 feet to the left of that. Pitts made a great leaping effort at the wall, but realistically going to be well beyond his reach. So it's now 6-2. to two. Leighton moves his feet. If Zach Leighton just stands there, he's over at first base. Out of Dana Hills, another excellent high school program where Zach played when he played his high school ball. Looks one away. Zach's got a slugging percentage of 465, eight home runs. He leads the team with home runs. Left-handed hitter. Zach says, see, when I lead the team with eight home runs, let's make it nine. Definitely not late on that one. He was on time, saw that all the way, and just crushed it over the scoreboard here at the Cypress Field. And, and and you know, Mark, we've seen a lot of games here. We've seen a lot of home runs. It's very rare that someone hits one out into right field. And he just absolutely crushed that one. It, it was gone. Yeah, and it, do you think he thought that after he hit it? I mean, it was, it was the traditional baseball pose. Let me fling my bat and then stand there and Watch to see how pretty it was. Well, thank you, Jack, because I said you were the leading home run hitter, and so, uh, you know, I'm feeling good. Maybe I should go by numbers. I've been the prognosticator on a base hit, an air turns to a base hit. I said he's a home run leader. He hits that for no, number nine in the season, and it's now six to three. And of course, I looked at you, and we've talked enough about how this is a home run Park, I mean, Albert, I feel like we've seen all 40 home runs here. And the ones that have flown out of here today have not been cheap. No. I mean, Zach Late definitely earned all of the one that he got a piece of. JT Crab definitely got a whole lot of it. And and even, you know, on the side for Cyprus, like, you know, both Rolbecki Becky. Uh, and Arenado, they just absolutely crushed the balls that they got a piece of as well. So that's going to bring up the right fielder, Kobe Williams. Swings through one at the dirt. Williams batting 295. Has two home runs, eight triples, three doubles. Six to three. Swings at another one, like waving at flies with a fly swatter. Back-to-back -back dingers 
in this inning. Off the plate. Started off with an easy pop fly, then a walk, then Crab hit one, and then Late said, oh, no, no, no. This is how it's supposed to look when he hit his. Williams swings at it in the dirt. Johnson gets it, throws over to first for the strikeout and out number two. That's going to bring up Luke Flynn, who's playing third base. For the Pirates. On the edge, first strike. Flynn batting 296. Pops it foul. Flynn popped out to second his first time up. Nathan settled under that one. Flynn would like to do something. But OCC decided, oh, well, you know what? If it's a game of long ball, we can do the same thing. He offers. They say no. I think he got a small stay of execution there. I think he broke yes. the plane just a little bit. Wow. One and two. Pulls it. De La Rosa. Drops over the first for out number three. Three runs on two hits. No errors, and nobody left on base. Well, as we head to bottom of three, welcome to the airport. Because the way they're flying out of here, it feels like it's a vacation weekend and everybody's going to Acapulco. Because the ball is going out like any 747 would. Taking off quickly and saying goodbye to everybody standing here waving their hands. We're sitting on a 6-3 to three score. It's Cypress 6. OCC3 here on Chargers Live and Sportsnet USA.net. Look at the third. Robert Pitts Jr. Then we're going to go over to Nathan Jackal at second base and then to Darren Chapman. Those will be the three coming up for your Cypress Chargers. Well, it's been a fun first three innings. I mean, if you like the long ball, this has been a great game for anybody like that. If you like a, a game where pitching is dominant, defense is making the play, you need to go over where the softball players are at right now and leave the baseball field alone here on Chargers Live and SportsUSA.net. Robert Pitt Jr. Clean center field. Well, he played long ball his first time up. Arenado hit one. Robert said, so can I. Robert's now got three home runs for the season. As hard as he's hitting the ball, that could have been number four. The, the sound. <laughs> When Pitts hit that one, I know it went fell, but whoo, it it had the distance no matter where he hit. Unfortunately, we're not playing cricket. That's outside. One and two. Well, they say hitting is contagious. Robert pops it to right field. And the two players stare at each other. Now Robert's in a rundown. That's 
and Roberts finally tacked out. So the ball drops in between second to Banyan and Williams in right field. Pitts turns and keeps going. So you give Pitts a base hit because he reached first base safely and then he is tagged out in the rundown. Three to six, to three, to four, to six, to three, to four, and he's tagged out. I'm surprised you bothered trying to score that one. <laughs> That's the fun part about keeping score. Nathan Jackal comes up. Jackal! In the gap, looks to turn to head for second. The ball is bobbled and he has got a double. So second hit of the inning. Is Corey Nealon? I love I love those pickle plays. I mean, you got to keep up all the numbers and stay with everybody. So Chapman comes up, hit by a pitch. His first time up, gets a strike. Darren batting 206. Only had 34 at bats so far in this season. Down in the dirt. Darren's one of those guys that plays with the bat a little. He'll drop it in a downward angle behind his shoulder, then reset, taps his shoulder, lays the bat there, then gets ready to hit. He puts a spark into that one. Taken there on a nice catch out in right field by Connor DeBanion, and I thought it was gonna carry more for a second there, Albert. I was waving it goodbye. And then it just sort of died at the last second. Yeah, it's, it's tough. It really is tough to really hit one out into right field. So that's going to bring up Trent Johnson. Trent offers. So they call a strike. Two hits on this inning. So Cypress has had hits in the first three innings in this game. Off the plate. Six to three, Cypress is in charge. Well, they took over in the first inning and they have stayed in front ever since. OCC tried to catch up, but fell a little short, trailing by half of what Cypress has. Winds blowing out to left field. Trent takes it up the middle. Easy pick up right there by Takata and goes over to first. No runs on two hits, no errors, and one left on base. And we played three full innings of play. It's Cypress three, OCC, oh, Cypress six, OCC three here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Forgetting about all those home runs already just become standard in this ballpark here on Chargers Live and Sportsnet, USA.net. 
course, Albert talked about it. Santa Ana, nine and four, leading the pack. Golden West College, right behind at eight and five, and so is Saddleback. You were down doing a game with Saddleback the other day. OCC in Fullerton at seven and six. RCC at six and seven. Cypress at four nine, and then Irvine Valley, three and ten. So Saddleback is right there. Saddleback was in the mix last year with Santa Ana. You saw them play the other day. What sort of team are they? Tough. Like, like, like they're a tough, aggressive game. Saddleback, you know, like eventually, you know, I did pull out like the victory, but Santa Ana definitely gave them a run for their money like that particular day. And I, I, I forget uh, the player's name, I, I, but I believe he's, and I, I honestly forget what team it was because I was too busy, you know, working all the technical stuff that day. You know, Noah was on the call. Uh, I, but I believe it was for Saddleback at a player there who's on like a 30 game hitting streak at wow. that time, which is impressive. And like, I think he got it like in like the ninth inning to like extend his uh, hitting streak even more. Wow, that's pretty impressive. It really is. So Hunter Drake. With a three-run lead, we'll see what he can do here in the top of the fourth. Aguilar flew out to Jack Burke in right field, his first time up. Jack, a good right fielder. Wakani Tanaka, that's the guy. Hunter skipped his first pitch in. Second one off. So another walk for Orange Coast College. See if they can take advantage of that. Connor DeBanion comes up. Fifty-four at bats this season, batting two seventy-eight, swings through that, goes down to one knee. The Banyan was involved in a runner interference play when he was on first base after walking. Late called strike. Looked a little low. They said he went, and and on that one, I don't know. I it looked like he checked up. That was a tough one, and, and like I know I was a little aggressive on a on a previous call, but for that one, it's like I oh, know I don't. I think he kind of held up. So that's going to bring up Takata Taylor playing shortstop today for OCC. Taylor batting 297. Slugging percentage of 410. He's got 30 hits this season. 14 strikeouts, 17 walks. Breaking ball right there. Pretty pitch. Taylor turns around, looks at home plate umpire and says, nice call. Dropped right there. One and one's the count.
It's that one foul down the third baseline. Nobody's close to it, so it's a foul ball. Four doubles, two triples, two home runs for Takata. So he does have the ability to get that extra base hit. The way the wind's been blowing, the way the ball's been flying, just a good ballpark to do it in. High and away. Two and two's the count. Cypress six, OCC three. Here on Chargers Live and Sportsnet, USA.net. Line drive back. Burke gets over there and pulls it back in. That's one thing I've said about Jack. Jack can make the plays. So no runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. As we head to the bottom of the fourth, it's Cypress three, Cypress six. I keep saying three. Why do I keep saying three? Cypress six, OCC three here on Sportsnet, USA.net. I think I want it to be a shutout. I brought up so much pitching, I want it to be a shutout. We head to the top of the order. Burke, Robecki, Sconsby. Then De La Rosa. It's been an offensive juggernaut today for Cyprus. And yeah, they've still been collecting hits across all the innings, of course, majority of their scoring all done in that big first inning. So Jack will leave things off. Base hit and a single so far. Base hit and a strikeout in this game. Roll Becky on deck, who's two for two. Jack shows you what he can do defensively. Jack put a spark into that also. Boy, if you like the sound of a ball being hit, this is the place to be, isn't it? Fouls that one away. Jack Ross says, you know what? Just need to find that rhythm here on the mound for OCC. High and tight. Burke looks at that one. One and two. Down in the dirt, two and two. Two-two count. Popped on top of the dugout. Just misses a Sportsnet USA.net camera. That was our nice one, too. Two and two. Need to put a guard up there with a glove. Off the plate. So. I could. Oh. I played outfield. That was good. 
Played outfield? Yeah. How old were you? Ten. <laughs> but I played center. When you were ten. Yeah. But that's where that's where they put you when you can actually play. If you can't, they put you in right. Jack Burke swings through that one. Left fielder. Who's been hot today, Evan Robecki. Big home run to start this game off. Then a single. Two for two. Swings through that. Evan, Evan batting 391 coming into the game. Hit his fourth home run. Takes that on the edge. Fifty hits this season for Evan. That bounced in there. Three home runs, now four, one triple, and 11 doubles. He's got the speed. He can move. He drives it in the alley. But fortunately, they have him lined up defensively with Owen Wessel doesn't have to move more than a couple feet to get the out. He was right on top of that one, perfectly placed. Mr. Sconsby playing first base for Cyprus. Takes that. Sconsby, 593. He's got nine doubles, six triples. Nine doubles, six home runs, no triples. Looks at that one too. Little giddy up freezes him there. Drops that one right in the alley for a clean base hit. So Albert, they've had a hit every inning. Multiple hits in the first, two hits in the second, two hits in the third, and now we get a hit here in the fourth. De La Rosa comes up, had a double his last time up. Arenado on deck. De La Rosa playing third base. And he's found a home of there at third base. Swings through that. Saw him at short early in the season. They moved him to third, and now it just seems he's more comfortable playing at the corner than playing at short. Flip over to first, not in time. Down in the dirt again, nice block by JT Crab behind the plate. In the dirt, he gets his body in front of it, knocks it down. Two and one the count. Lazy fly ball to center field. Taken right there by Sebastian Moore. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Well, we're almost halfway through. We're getting close there. 
It's Cypress 6, OCC 3, here on SportsnetUSA.net and Chargers Live. There I go. Two errors today. I finally got a base hit myself here on Chargers Live and SportsnetUSA.net. Ed, John, Albert, and the old guy. And when you look at some of the recent games, I mean, well, Cypress did beat OCC the other day. 19 to 10. So, I mean, this is a team that scores a lot. They lost against Golden West College 12 to 6. They lost against Golden West College 7 to 4. They lost against Golden West College 8 to 5. They tied East LA when they played them 4 to 4. They lost to Cuesta 15 to 4. So, when you look at those last few games, they've been able to put runs on the board. They just have not found that sort of perfect time to say no more for you, their opponents, and they just can't hold them down. A lot of runs. You look at 31, 38, 46, 50, 65 runs that they had in their last six games they have given up. Of course, Orange Coast has given up 28 in their last two games. So we go back to the top of the order. Orange Coast trailing by three. Skipped in the dirt. Well, it looked like it might be a landslide of runs when we started this game. Now it's sort of become more natural to play the game that most people think the way the game should be played. And we get that watermelon sound, which everybody screams for, and that's usually when somebody's getting hit with a baseball. You know, go in and thump a watermelon in a store. That's the sound of being hit by a baseball. Yeah, Wessel just wore that one right between the shoulder blades, right on the numbers. Just that cold, dead thump. Yeah, it's like a ripe watermelon. It's not, it's not the bad watermelon. It sounds like the good watermelon. I you know it's nice and hit. sweet, but not sweet to get hit right between the blades. Throw over to first, not in time. Six to three. Six run, 10 hits for Cypress. Three runs, four hits for Orange Coast College. Moore pulls out one foul. Moore walked in the first, walked in the third. So he hasn't officially been at the plate yet. Of course, there's that old argument. The man at home would be saying, see, how can you talk about on-base percentage? He just walked twice, that's all. Did he score? Is what Once. I would get from Mr. Nealon. I think anytime you get on base, you give your team an opportunity to score. Burke making a nice little hop catch over in right field. I like the way Jack Burke plays in right field. Jack goes and gets the ball. He, lo he moves well in right field. He glides in right field. Jack makes another play in right field. And when you look at Jack, he's just good at what he does out there. I mean, if you're somebody looking for an excellent outfielder, 
You look at Jack Burke. JT Crabb comes up. Snap throw over to first, not in time. Trent has made a few good snap throws from behind the plate today. Trent Johnson catching for your Cypress Chargers. So one down, Jack Burke making that catch in right field. Flip over to first base, not in time. Batter gets hit. Runner was going. So Mr. Late will come up. Zach Late, who last time up, King right Kong the ball. Time. King Kong the ball out of this field. You heard it. You saw it, you felt it. It's one of those rare no doubters into right field at this ballpark. Down by shoe tops for a ball. Six to three. Cypress up over OCC. Cypress trying to climb up the food chain. Late, easy, Taylor made double play, four to six to three. And Cypress gets out of the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base as we head to the top of the sixth. It's Cypress six, OCC three, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Exciting community college baseball. Make sure you take a look if you're around, have nothing to do. You say, you know what, I'd love to go to a game. I'd love to see a baseball game. You don't want to play the prices for that expensive team up in LA. You really don't want to pay the prices for that team that never wins down in Orange County. And driving to San Diego is just too far. Then find a community college team, swing on by, stop in, watch the players of the future. Play a little baseball. We do it here at SportsNetUSA.net, and you should do it when you have an opportunity to come on in and watch these talented community college student athletes play the game of baseball. If you can't come in person, make sure you watch it when it's on the air on Sportsnet, USA.net. And if you don't like baseball, but you find softball exciting, well, all you have to do is walk across the street here at Cypress. If you're over around the Fullerton area, right there in the corner by their beautiful new football stadium, see what Speedy and Chris Lab going on, top team in the state of California in softball. Was a preseason favorite to win the state championship and now there's a lot of believers so we'll see what happens. And see if they can pull it off before the season ends here on SportsNetUSA.net and Charger Live. Head to bottom of five, Cypress up by three. Arenado comes up. Arenado pulls it foul down the third baseline. Crab behind the plate, late at first. The Banyan at second. Takata at short. Flynn at third third for Orange Coast College. Owen in left, Moore in center, Williams in right. That's the defensive setup for OCC. 
the Pirates. Arenado hits an easy one to Moore in center field. He says, it was easy. Thank you. I'll take it for out number one. Robert Pitts Jr., last time up, got a base hit, then turned because he thought he could make it to second, but he couldn't, so he got in a rundown. Pulls it down, deep behind third base. The throw, Robert just gets taken out there by Luke Flynn. Nice play by Luke over at third base. Luke's got a great arm at third base. Albert, he bounced it, but it was enough. And back a little bit, so kind of going against his momentum with the throw towards first, just barely ekes out the throw to get out Robert Pitts Jr. Nathan Jackal comes up. Pop to second and then hit a double into the gap. Takes that under the arms. <clears throat> Letter high, just on the edge. Nice turnout again by all the parents, relatives, friends. Down. Three and one's the count. Chapman on deck. Fouled away. Cyprus, four and nine in conference behind RCC, who is six and seven. Be a huge win today. Jackal gets on with a walk. And of course, for now the fifth straight inning, OCC unable to have a clean inning and prevent any runners on base for Cyprus. Chapman said, I'd like to get on base, but not like I did in the first inning. Looks at a strike. Darren Chapman. Short stop for your Cypress Chargers on this day. Runner goes. Hit over to second. Looked right there and a quick play by Connor DeBanion for out number three. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. Well, we made it through five, so the game's official. It's Cypress six. The Pirates 3 here on Chargers Live and Sportsnet USA.net. Well, it can start to rain any time now. It'll be an official game. We can go home early. The fans will be a little chilled because they're all dressed for summer. I'm under the easy up, so I'll be fine. You three will be getting wet. I'm more towards the middle. You're like on the edge there. So if it starts raining sideways, you know. Well, no, somebody's got to run and get the equipment if it starts raining. Oh, and you told right. me about your blazing speed. I do have blazing speed, yeah. Yeah, when you were 10. Yeah. And you're, well, I, I, you I, should be three times faster now because I'm you're older than faster, 10. Yeah. I, I, I also played center field for my kickball team. See? My you adult, were t when you were 10? No, my adult kickball league. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, come on now, a bunch of a bunch of uh, it's co-ed kickball, right? Yeah. Okay. Sure, you need to run faster because those women are beating the crud out of you while you're playing against them. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Right. Just wanna we just wanna get that on the record. Albert wants to make sure he gives credit to who the credit belongs to. 
Do you play that with uh, the one you love in your life? Does she play that game too? She did, yeah, for a minute. Oh, okay. Oh, she doesn't anymore? No. Oh, okay. we're, we're, we, we are past those days. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I thought maybe you two were still playing it, so, you know. We've thought about it. Just too much time. Oh, okay. All I do is think about it now. I, tch, if I have to run, forget it. I mean, if the big flood is coming, I just hope I can still swim. That's it. You know, if I get out, run away, f uh, I'm out of luck. I'd say I'm out of time, but that's not true. New pitcher for Orange Coast. Cameron Maloney is on the mound for OCC. Uh, it's Douglas Crystal, because uh, Cypress is pitching. Oh. Well, I was right, though. New pitcher on the mound. Oh, it is okay. a new pitcher on the mound, but yes, well, it you is. Well, uh, They're warming up down there. Douglas Crystal for Cyprus. There we go. So that puts me at 500, right? Yep. Okay. And I could still be right on the other. Crystal so we don't know yet. Comes in <laughs> with an ERA of uh, 514, so less than ideal. That's across 21 innings pitched here for your Chargers. So Ross is the pitcher of record. Hunter Ross. As we get another ripe watermelon on that play as Williams gets hit by the pitch. So Hunter Ross can win the game. Can't lose it. Hunter Drake. Jack Ross. You know, I'm going home. <laughs> Hunter Ross can, Hunter Drake can win it. Ross can lose it. I am going home. You know what? Flynn, up the middle, easy bounce, flip. The second for one. So the runner at second is out. Flynn's on in a fielder's choice. Looks like they're gonna have a discussion Could be the coach for Cyprus as Art maybe wants to make an argument for interference yet again. And truth be told, I don't think they're going to get that. I mean, like it was a difficult feed from Chapman to Jackal to try and turn it over. Made a nice, like, underhanded flip, but the positioning for Jackal was not exactly favorable. He had to make a little more effort to try and get the throw on time to first. Yeah, and, and considering the way the throw was made to him and then he pirouetted at second base. So discussion on the sidelines. Six runs, 10 hits for Cypress. Three runs, four hits for Orange Coast College. Okay, hey, look, I got the last two right. I'm, I'm getting better here now. Must be my blood sugar. Didn't eat enough food this morning. I'll find any reason to say why well, I wasn't really wrong. That's why I got Albert along with me. You know what they say about his excuses, Mark. <laughs> For every mistake I make, I can find five that Albert has too. So I just, you know, I, I'm feeling good at this table. Then there's John, who's just falling asleep over there on me. Ed yeah. just killed over at the edge of the table. 
one, one thing that kind of amuses me a little bit is like, you know, second base umpire over there is kind of like, you know, covering his mouth a little bit so, you know, no one can see what he's actually saying. I'm like, there's not, there aren't any cameras on him. Oh, wait, that's right. There's there's our camera literally staring <laughs> staring him in the face trying to see like what the actual conversation is. So I will say, good awareness by the umpire there to actually know what's going on, to realize that there's more than just people who have eyes on you. There are actual cameras. Well, here's the thing is, too, that you're getting all three umpires that are discussing the situation. In the meantime, Douglas Crystal of Cyprus is keeping himself loose by playing catch with De La Rosa over at third base. This discussion's taking way too long. Now, they're going to go over and talk to Orange Coast about what's going on. So it is runner interference at second base for out number two. Big call there, Mark. Big call. Come on, Bill, come on. So the designated hitter will come up to the play. For OCC. It's the first time I've seen that many runner interference calls in one game. And same play, both of them where they were saying that the person making the double play switch was going to do it. Nice little running catch by Evan Robecki in left field. Four out number three. No runs, no hits, no errors unless I'm making them. Nobody left on base. As we head to the top of the sixth, it's Cypress six, OCC three here on SportsNetUSA.net. Now that I've been picked on for six solid innings, I'll turn it over to Albert Robles. Let me get out my pencils. Five and a half. So that I, I, I got to, uh, you know, start marking down every time you do something wrong here that I'll just feel better about myself. Have fun. I got two pencils, and they got lead in them. So don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll have, that's right. I'll be getting you on both teams at the same time. Can, can, can you write with both hands? Like I, I can. can. I can. Yep. Get a little ambidextrous action going on. You know what? I caught that when I was four years old. I had to wear leg braces to help myself. Here on <laughs> SportsNetUSA.net, Chargers Live. So we do have a new pitcher on the mound for OCC, but it is not number 16. It is number 44, Zach Dendecker. 6'8 freshman out of El Toro High School. So we'll have some more information on Den Decker in just a moment here. See, I told you there was a new pitcher for Orange Coast College. I just happened to get the wrong guy. That's yeah. all. Look at that. I was early. I told you there was a new pitcher. That just shows you I wasn't wrong. I mean, I, I think we both knew that after five innings and six runs allowed, I think Zach, uh, Jack Ross's day was going to be done. I just told you all a little early. Yeah. They changed the pitcher on me, too. I mean, I had the right guy coming in. I'm going to have to talk to the coaches over at Orange Coast and say, what are you guys doing to me? Those are my pins. See, they're attacking you also. Uh, yeah, both their pencils flew at me in uh, did righteous they, did they fury. Get you? Did they get you? Almost. 
So Den Decker, four appearances this season, three innings pitched all together. He's given up three hits, five runs, four of them earned. He's given up four walks, three strikeouts, and allowed one home run. So he's got a K's per nine of nine and an ERA of 12. Of course, that is inflated given the fact that he's only pitched three total innings. So we'll see what he's able to do here today against what is a red-hot Chargers offense. So Trent Johnson leading off for the Chargers' first pitch high inside for a ball. Ball two. Ben Decker, six foot eight. Big boy. Little grounder up the middle. Shortstop has it. Throw is in time. So great play by Taylor Takata to get the leadoff hitter out. It's going to take us back to the top of the order. It's going to bring up Jack Burke. And on deck will be Evan Rolbecki. Skies one out to right field. Getting under it and recording the out is Kobe Williams. So two away very quickly here in the sixth. Here's Rolbecki with two out. Homered in his first at bat, singled in his second, scored both times obviously, and flew out to left in the fourth. Tried to get cheeky with a with a bunt there, but fouls it off. Luckily gets out of play. Takes that one just inside for strike two. In the dirt. See what Dendecker has in store for Mr. Rilbecki. One two pitch in the dirt, two and two. So three balls in a row, all of them in the dirt. Count is full to Rebecca. See if Rebecca can get a nice pitch here to deal with. Ball four in the dirt. So Rebecca earns the walk. Going to bring up Ryan Shonsby. One for two with a walk. Sharp grounder foul down the right side. You know what? I get a kick out of Shonsby. Most first base people, left handers. Left handed hitter. But a right hander when he plays first base. I like that. Big hit up the middle. Drops in front of the center fielder, Sebastian Moore, going first to third, Israel Becky. 
So runners on the corners with two out here in the sixth. Nice base running by Robecki. Never stops, knows it's going to drop. It's a single for sure. He turns at second, finds his base coach, who's waiting for him there, letting him know where to go and what to do. Beautiful base running by the young man, Evan Robecki. Absolutely, and with two out, you really just need to be taken off anyway. First pitch just catches the zone. So 0 and 1 to De La Rosa. Low 1 and 1. So wind blowing a little right to left. Dendecker has the pitch selection. De La Rosa fouls that one off, one and two. In the dirt, Crab able to keep it in front of him. Nice way to break it down. No advancement over at first base with that ball going into the dirt. Call strike three just got the edge of the zone. And De La Rosa goes down looking for the third and final out of the sixth. So no runs, one hit, no errors, and two left on base. After six, it's Chargers three. So I did the same thing you just did. There you go. Chargers six, Pirates three. That's okay. That's in the Albert thing for uh, error number one. You know, when you look at some <laughs> of the uh, leaders in the OEC right now, I've got Jack Burke, as long as Schmidt over at Fullerton doesn't hit another one. Jack Burke is now tied for the lead in the OEC in home runs, followed by Zamora, Allen over there. So Jack at the top there. Pavlovsky here at Cypress leads the OEC in strikeouts. He's, so he's one of the better strikeout throwers. Wessel at Orange Coast has uh, the lead in stolen bases here on Charger Live and SportsNetUSA.net. Sconsby is right there in the top five for runs batted in from Cyprus with 39. Pavlovsky is right at the top with six wins. And with strikeouts, like I said, he's already got 70. So that puts him there. Matlock, who's not playing today, leads the OEC in hitting at 400. Robecki is at 391, they have him there. De La Rosa was up there last time they did this. Earn run average, it's Jenkins out of Riverside with a 1.76. So up for the Pirates here in the seventh are DeBannon, Takata, and then Wessel. Big curveball high in the zone, one and oh. Douglas Crystal still on the mound for Cyprus as the 1 0 pitch just as high, ball two. Big swing, two and one. DeBannon really should be just 
focusing on trying to make contact and not so much swinging for the fences. Looks at strike two. Yeah, you look at Connor this season, he's only struck out nine times, walk six. 54 at bats, he's got 15 hits. Strike three. Pretty pitch. So one away, here comes Taylor Takata, shortstop for OCC. Flew out in his previous at bat into right field that started a double play to end the inning. One oh two Takata. Two and oh. Brings the heat on that one, two and one. Yeah, Takata looked a little awkward on that last swing. On the outer edge, two and two. Kind of looking to protect the zone. Gets a piece of that one right through the five six gap for a single. Back to the top of the order. It's gonna be Owen Wessel. O for two and was hit by a pitch in his previous at bat. Breaking ball, low away. And this is where we've seen Cypress in the later innings. When they're usually in front, all of a sudden, it's, it's just like when the sun starts to go down, their energy goes down with it. So we'll see if they can finish what they started on this day today. Nice breaking ball for a strike. Dakota, nice conservative lead off of first. As Crystal goes back to the curveball, one and two. Wessel just seemed very much unprepared for both of those breaking pitches. Goes back to the breaking ball, little grounder. De La Rosa's got it, only play is at first. But getting over to second on the fielder's choice is Takata. So two away now with a runner in scoring position. It's gonna bring up Sebastian Moore. Oh for one, two walks. One of them was a hit by pitch. Correction, just two walks. Different player got hit by a pitch. Fastball in for strike. So 
So Crystal one pitch away from getting out of this inning. Goes back to the fastball just outside, one and two. Got a short lead off of second. Outside, 2-2. Two, two. Defense aligned to the right just a little bit. Popped up. Deep fly out to left field. Getting under it is Becky to record the third out of the seventh. So no runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Coming up for your Chargers. It's going to be Arenado, Pitts, and Jackal. You know, next time you're out, and when you think about the 116 community colleges around California, if you're looking for something to do, if you're an old person like me, which, you know, hey, you can't get much older than I am, and just sort of saying, I'm tired of sitting around home, well, go to a community college. Find out what they've got going on. Look at the classes that they've got to offer. Hey, maybe you've always wanted to try your hand at pottery and never gave it a shot. Or maybe you think you're one of those people that, you know what, I should have studied harder when I was younger. It still gives you that chance to go back. Hey, you could get an AA in two years and you don't have that college degree at 85. Who knows where it'll take you after that. So stop by your community colleges, or you could be the thespian from way back. Be like Albert when he was 10 years old. He was in his first school play. He might think he can still act these days at the ripe age of, well, we won't tell you how old he actually is. <laughs> so stop by any of the community colleges in California. See what they've got to offer. Take advantage of that free education and have a ball instead of sitting around at home saying, what am I going to do today? Community colleges will give you something today, tomorrow, and the rest of your life. We endorse it here at Sportsnet, USA.net. Den Decker back out on the mound for his second inning of work. Although, fun fact, in middle school, Mark, I was, uh, I believe, one of the script revisers and or, like, script directors for our school play, which was at the time a Midsummer Night's Dream. Ah, oh, Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. by, 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 by no means an actor, but I can definitely correct some people. There we go. That ball finds a zone, two and one. Kiss me through this vile hole. Oh, that's a line from Midsummer. Big rip right up the middle for a base hit. So with the exception of the fifth inning, the Chargers have had a hit in every inning so far. That gives them 12 in the game today. And they've had a runner on base in every single inning. So here's Pitts Jr. Pitts two for three today. Hit out into left field. It's gonna drop in for a base hit.
hit number 400 for the season for your Cypress Chargers. 13th hit of the day. They had 387 coming into this. Now they've got 400 hits for the season. Just impressive. Here's Nathan Jackal. Drops a bunt along the first baseline. Dendecker can't field it cleanly. Give him 401. So Jackal reaches on a bunt. So bases are loaded thanks to Jackal reaching on a infield single bunt. It's going to bring up the shortstop, Darren Chapman. Infield in for Orange Coast. Chapman 0 for 2 with a walk. Was hit by a pitch in his first plate appearance. Flew out to right. And then grounded into a fielder's choice in the fifth. Fastball low, 2 0. Flynn in at third. Takata, even at the bag, at short. The Banyan almost on the grass, and then Zach Late just inside first base. That one catches the bottom area of the zone, two and two. Sorry, two and one. Trailing by three. They don't want to give up anything else. Three and one. OCC barking at the home plate umpire. Nice hitters count for Chapman with the bases all charged up. Fouls that one off, full count. Just a little late on the swing. Looking for something he could drive and he gets there a little late. Almost a borderline protection swing. Works the walk. So credit Chapman with the RBI. And the bases are still loaded. Arenado comes in to score. So Pitts is now on third. Jackal at second. Chapman on first. Here is Trent Johnson. Michael Rhoda is pitch hitting for Johnson. Thank you, Mark. Rode a 6'4", 230, big freshman out of Great Oak High School. Batting 250 this season. Free swinger. Pops that one up. Umpires rule infield fly. That's it. They better rule infield fly. So back to the top of the order. Only one out. Jack gets introduced to the high to the, cheese. Yeah, maker of the ball. I wonder if he could actually read on the ball who made it when it went by. If it was off speed, you could probably see, you know, Rawlings, you know, scrolling right across his face. Ah, ah. Oh, 
inside. 2-0 and oh to Jack Burke. Try not to let Jack extend his hands. Wind's blowing out the left field. Jack can put a little spark into it, get it up in the air. Jet stream might carry it for him. Bendecker seems to basically be pitching around Jack Burke. He's only one for four today. He's been on base in his first plate appearance, struck out the next two at-bats, and then flew out to right field in the fifth, or sixth. Why would you pitch around him? You'll, you'll walk in a run. Sometimes people do not smart things. And that's what they do. So Jack gets an RBI. So Pitts will score, Jackal to third, Chapman to second, and Burke now standing on first with an RBI walk. So two runs already in. Only two hits so far. And we'll see if they want to leave the pitcher on the mound. I mean, you've got to look at Robecki, what he's already done today. He had a home run, then he got a single to follow it. Flew out the left field, then walked. Smart baseball player, excellent with the bat, Evan, this season. Close to 400 when you look at his batting average. 116 at-bats, he had 45 hits. Now he's got 46 hits, and they're going to go to the mound and have a little conversation about what's going on. And the ball's actually been taken out of Dendecker's hand, so his day is done. We're going to have a new pitcher in on the mound for OCC. So in on the mound now for the Pirates is number 21, Nate Lockwood. 6'2", freshman out of Edison. Third time we've heard that high school here today, Mark. They've got, Edison's got an excellent baseball program. We can understand why a lot of these kids would come and play at the next level. There are some pitching stats for Lockwood. Across 14 appearances, pitched 23 innings, allowed 29 hits, 36 runs, 27 of them earned. He's given up 17 walks, struck out 15. ERA over 10. And for Lockwood in this particular position with the bases juiced, you're really just looking for a nice quick ground ball and back to the dugout you go. And if you're Robecki, you're looking to make his day a whole lot worse. Come on. 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 Come on.
Well, Becky looks at strike one. Oh, one on one. Lockwood has a sign. Brings the breaking ball, but dirts it. Rebecca just going to say nice and patient, let Lockwood come to him. Brings the fastball, grounds and foul. Evans swung over the top of that one. Breaking ball, felled off. Little piece of it, that's all he needed. Stay alive. Seemed to catch him a little off guard, but he just, just knew, just gotta, just gotta barrel it up just a little bit. Two and two's the count. Don't make a mistake on this young man. He's an excellent hitter. The two, two, grounder. Off the come in to score. So Rebecca, I think I'm gonna have to give that a single because that, that was like a diving stop made by Flynn and just goes careening off of his glove. Can't really give that an error. So two RBIs on the single for Evan Robecki. Jackal and Chapman come in to score. Burke is now at third. So they gave that a hit. Which I think is the right call. Because like it's not like Flynn booted it. Well, the ball was hit sharply. He couldn't move to his left quick enough to actually make a play on the ball. It's lucky he got glove on it. Grounder down the third baseline. That's going to be a fair ball. Burke comes in to score easily. Rolbecki heading to third in safely. And Shonsby is now standing at second. So a single for Shonsby. Advances to second on the throw. It's going to bring up Albert De La Rosa. So four hits already for the Chargers in this inning. They've put up a five spot. In the dirt, but blocked. Ripped up the middle over Takata's glove for a base hit, scoring easily. 
Israel Becky Shonsby over to third. And the Chargers have officially batted around. So here's Luca Arenado. Actually, it looks like they've uh, pinch hit for Arenado here. Hit into center field. Tracking it down is Moore to record the second out. It's going to be a sack fly. So Shonsby scoring on the sack fly. That was Jacob Elliott who was in for Luca Arenado. And here's Robert Pitts Jr. In for strike, one on one. Lockwood checks the run at first and steps off. Check swing, hang. Wins the appeal, two and one. Almost looked as if they weren't actually going to check down to first. I thought he didn't go in the first place, but might as well. The 2 1. Outside, 3 and 1. Fouled back out of play, full count. So De La Rosa still on first. Nice easy lead. Runner goes and Pitts skies it, calling for it. And taking it in is Takata. And that is the third and final out here of the seventh. So six runs on five hits, no errors, and one left on base. We go to the top of the eighth. So a very, very productive seventh inning for the Chargers, and they go up 13 to three. over the OCC Pirates. 13 runs on 17 hits, Mark. Yeah, seven seven runs in the seventh inning. Gets them to the lucky number 13. They had five runs in the first inning, one run in the second inning, and seven runs in the seventh inning to put them at 13 for the game. Crystal still on the mound for what's going to be his third inning of work. I will not comment on how well he's done because that's the type of guy that I am. There we go. 
And Hunter Drake, remember now, would be the pitcher of a record if Chapman were to win, the, uh, Cypress were to win this game, so. That's right, Drake went the required five innings. Yep. Struck out three, walked six, gave up four hits, three runs, all of them earned. So not the cleanest pitching line for Drake, but he got the job done. He'll, he'll take it. He'll take it. In for a strike for JT Crab. You know, I think that's the loudest that the umpire has called strike today. And that last one. Or maybe the crowd just died down that much oh, for you, be, for you yeah. to hear him. Yeah. Pretty quiet here on, on the Chargers side. They, they know how comfortable they are right now. Well, let's be realistic. No, no lead's we've comfortable seen, here. Yeah, I was going to say, we've seen games here. You didn't feel like you have everything wrapped up and the next thing you know you're going home with tears on your face. They, let's put it this way, like they're not quiet or like they're quiet, not comfortable. They're very much just sitting there in their own anxiety. So a called strike three to JT Crab. So one away here in the top of the eighth. The combined pitching here at Cypress College. Here's Zach Late. Takes the 1-0 pitch for a ball, 2-0. Late, of course, had that big home run into right field back in the third inning. Fouls that one back and out of play, two and one. Late has a lot of pop in that bat. Yeah, it's got a nice swing for a lefty. He doesn't have that uppercut swing that you'll see from a lot of left-handed hitters. <clears throat> a lot of levelness. Up the right side, fielding it cleanly is Jackal. Two down here in the eighth. That's gonna ring up Kobe Williams. Struck out twice and was hit by a pitch. I was ready. Fouled back, Mark Mark definitely was ready for it. He saw that immediately go up. I was ready, I was gonna dive for it. Looked up, lifted up his hands as if he was, you know, waiting for that drop of rain, come right on down. Make the, make the you know, acrobatic looking catch even though it was just, you know, simple. Gotta make it look dramatic. You know, that's why you flip the hat off while you're running. One and one to Williams. Dive in the dirt. You, dive when you don't have to. Breaking ball, finds the zone, strike two. And he drills Williams right in the numbers. It's the second time he's hit him today.
Well, if you're Golden West College or Saddleback, this is a good day for you because Santa Ana falls to Riverside two to nothing. Wow. Golden West is playing Saddleback, so now Golden West College is tied with Santa Ana for the lead in the OEC. Curveball inside, ball one. To Luke Flynn. Little brush back pitch, two and oh. Here's the 2-0. Just outside, 3-0. and Crystal has his sign as Williams leads off a of first. Just misses ball four. So back-to-back -back walks issued here in the eighth with two out. And Crystal really just looking for a nice ground ball to get out of this inning. You know, the runner's on first and second, at least you know you can go to almost any base for an out. Breaking ball in the dirt. Keith Aguilar. Really hasn't done much. Flew to right, walked in the fourth, flew to left in the sixth. Aguilar offers and fouls that one off. Looks like he just got the inner half of his foot. The 1-1, one, one. hit up the middle. It's gonna drop in for a base hit. Pitts quickly gets it back in. Shonsby cuts it off. Bases are loaded. Nice play by Pitts. He was on the move when the ball got hit. Drops in front of him, takes it up on the dead run. Then comes flying home. And nobody in the bullpen yet for Cyprus. So as of right now, it's Crystal's game. Breaking ball inside. Here's Connor to Bannon. Walked and struck out twice. Was also part of that runner's interference call in the second inning. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Skips away, but not enough for runners to advance. 3-0. Come on, Joe, come on. Come on, Joe, come on. And you know, e even with this lead, Mark, I I'm surprised that Cypress doesn't have anybody warming up. Well, as a pitcher too, I mean, the thing is, your defense has been solid today. They're playing deep. In for a strike. You've got really good players. 
behind you. De La Rosa at third, Chapman is short. Nathan Jackal at second. Sconsby over at first. Good gloves, outfield that is strong. Ball four. So an RBI for DeBannon. Scoring is going to be Williams Flynn over to third, Aguilar to second. Still two away, and now we have a little meeting on the mound. And this is when you're a pitcher, you have to trust your defense. I mean, you've got Robecki in left, can play. He's got a glove. He's got an arm. He's sweet in left field. Pitts has got speed and can track it down. Jack Burke. Every, is, every single one of those pitchers has, rain, has yeah, range. Yeah, the outfielders, they just move. Jack Burke is just excellent with a glove when you look at him. So the outfield, you've got to love if you're Cypress. I'm not worried about the ball going to them. De La Rosa has the most errors on the team with 12, but he's been solid once they have moved him to third base, not at shortstop. Chapman has looked good over there. Jackal is fair. And then you look at the big guy at first base, he'll bail anybody out if the throw is close. So if you're on the mound, let them swing. You've got a comfortable lead. Let your defense bail you out. Don't be walking anybody. Go after the hitter and see what you can do. Whew. So Crystal, in my opinion, gets a little squeeze there, 1-0. And yeah. it's like I said earlier, Mark, I, I, when you're in this position, just let it rip. Like, yeah. I mean, if you can throw a breaking ball, okay, sure, that's fine. But, like, I, if your fastball still has some zip on it, just throw it in there. Yeah, I mean, look at the guys that are out there. And if they get three runs, they get three runs. I mean, you're at this stage that you don't want to give them anything for free. Yeah, because, like, like, if they hit a fastball, great. At least they earned it. At least you can, you know, hand it to them. Two and one. It's not really a situation where you need to get creative, just need to get aggressive. Nice fastball. And it's not like it's not like Takata's been lighting things up either. So he hasn't. You know, make Takata beat you. Goes with the breaking ball, swung and a miss, strike three. So that ends the eighth. That's one run on one hit and three left on base. Well, as we look around the 3C2A, we already brought it up. Santa Ana loses today. Riverside wins. So that puts Santa Ana at 9 and 5. Victor Valley loses to Chafee 8 to 2. Grossmont and Southwestern top the eighth. They're knotted at six. Golden West College climbs into a tie for first place in the OEC, beating Saddleback seven to two. American River loses their game to Sac City six to one. No score at the Porterville game. Pasadena City, well, they're up on Compton ten to seven. Mount Sac, oh, here's one for you. Mount Sac twenty. That's the bottom of the seventh. San Bernardino Valley, they're winning over Mount San Jacinto, 10 to three. San Diego Mesa, they couldn't do anything. They're losing to Palomar, five to nothing. We've got this game, LA Harbor's up three to two. Folsom Lake over Sierra, 11 to eight. Irvine Valley, 13. Fullerton, 10. So Fullerton is now at 500, had a chance to move up on everybody, couldn't do it in Irvine Valley, 
wins their fourth conference game of the season. San Joaquin Delta nine, Diablo Valley two. San Diego City, well, they've got a couple touchdowns and a field goal over Imperial Valley. Fresno 10, Reedley 4, Long Beach trailing East LA 6 to 5. Then you look at Santa Rosa Modesto, that's a one run game, 9 to 8. Santa Rosa over Modesto. San Francisco, well, they can't win their game today. Oxnard losing to Cuesta 8 to nothing. Monterey Peninsula and Cabrillo tied at 3. No score in Barstow and Desert. Santa Barbara over Moore Park, 5 to 1. Hart and Nail over Gavilan, 3 to 1. Skyline tied with Chabot. And Ohlone over West Valley, 6 to 3. Some of those games here in the CCCAA. So, pinch hitter here in the bottom of the eighth for the Chargers. Hitting for Nathan Jackal is number 15, Derek Gonzalez. Quickly grounded over to short. Making the throw in time is Takata, one away. Hitting for Chapman now is number one, Trent Lyle. Trent batting 290 this season. Four oh five on base percentage, 323 slugging percentage. Hasn't had a lot of at bats. This will be his 32nd at bat this season. Another grounder chopped. Fielding it is Takata. Throw is in time. Takata twice has shown his athleticism. Getting on the ball, taking the right bounce on it, then throwing off balance on the off foot over to first base. Back-to-back -back nice plays by Takata for Orange Coast College. Now Norman pinch hitting here. In the dirt, 1-0. and Nate batting 3-0-8. Should we know we also have a new pitcher on the mound for OCC, number 19, Trevor Steele. Inside, 2-0 to Nate. Chopper foul. Foul tipped and hung on to two and two. Call strike three. So no runs, no hits, no errors and nobody left on base. We go to the top of the ninth. Chargers lead the Pirates 13 to four. And coming back out onto the mound 
for what is going to be his fourth inning of work is Douglas Crystal. And if you're a softball fan, which we know you are because you've been following Cypress College Softball here on SportsNetUSA.net and Chargers Live, and we know how Brad Pickler is chasing Fuller to college, well, Cypress Softball takes their game today 9-4 to four over Orange Coast College. And depending what Fullerton does, Brad Pickler can be a step closer to maybe being in first place in the OEC. And if you're Brad Pickler, I'm sure that's something you would very much like to see. But at the same time, I think you would also be kind of comfortable not. I mean, like, with the way the Cypress softball team has played and the way he knows how to coach all those young women, you can never, ever count out that team. The only thing, if you're, if you're Brad Pickler, you've got to look at the amount of errors they've made recently and not feel really comfortable about that. Mount Sack taking on L.A. Harbor in softball. Mount Sack is Mount Sack. Fullerton in the bottom of the seventh, up two to nothing over Santiago Canyon. In softball. So Fullerton trying to stave off your Cypress Chargers. First pitch in for a strike. Jackson Licata now is over at shortstop for your Cypress Chargers. Darren Chapman's out of the game. So Licata now playing short. Outside, three and one. Foul back out of play. Yeah, so among the other defensive replacements, so like you said, Mark, uh, Lakata in at shortstop for Robecki. Derek Gonzalez takes over in left field. Uh, Trent Lyle moves over to second. And uh, Bigani is in for Norman behind the plate. And Wessel earns the walk. It's going to bring up Sebastian Moore. Oh for two with two walks today at the plate for Sebastian. Takes first pitch high. Umpire pause in the game, make sure Crystal properly locates the rosin bag, make sure it's actually behind the mound out of play. Really more of a safety concern. Well, it's also it's also a thing that's a distraction. So, because your rosin bag is snow white, depending on where the guy comes from or releases the ball out, realize as a batter, you're going to be looking for that object with a white tint coming out of his hand. Grounder over to second. Records the out at second, safe at first. So Fielder's choice, 4-6-3. 
So Lyle makes a nice little play. As Trent Lyle is over at second base for your Cypress Chargers. It's going to bring up JT Crab. Double L in the middle of the field, Licata and Lyle. Swing and a miss, 0-2. Oh Call strike three. So seven strikeouts for the Chargers pitching staff here tonight. Fastball outside, 1-0. and oh. I'm going to drop in one more softball score. Cerritos College all over Pasadena, 8 to nothing. Cody has got it going again. As we get closer to the playoffs, she just gets her team to play better and better. We saw that the other day and now again today as they take on Pasadena and beat Pasadena in softball. When you can hold off a team like Mount Sac the way they did on Tuesday, you can beat anybody in their conference. Just need it all to come together. Yep, at the right time and with enough time and you do that, you're there. Breaking ball. Strike two. Two, two. Just outside. Full count. Zach Leggett is just saying, just give me one more so that Albert can get that sound that he wants to hear. Such a good sound. Come on, Doug, come on. Move the bat. Grounded off foul. Come on, Doug, come on. <laughs> one away, come on. Zach's got the demeanor of a baseball player. We had the pleasure of meeting him earlier today. Late works the walk. So more on second, late on first. With two outs here in the top of the ninth. Coming up is Williams. Skips away. Runners will advance. So runners advance on the wild pitch from Crystal. One zero to Williams. Yes. 
inside 2-0. Crystal just really needs one good pitch. In first strike. Borderline pitch right on the bottom edge of the zone, 2-2. Two, two. Swung and a miss, strike three, and that is the game. Chargers win 13-4 and improve their record to 18 uh, to 19 and 13 and 1 and are now 5 and 9 in the OEC Orange Coast will now be 13 and 20 7 and 7 in the OEC Hunter Drake earns the win and Douglas Crystal earns the rare and impressive four inning save And that's going to do it for us here today. I'm Elba Robles, Mark Pavlovich to my right. For John and Ed, you've been watching Chargers Baseball on Chargers Live and Sportsnet USA.net.